Welcome to another teardown video. This time we're taking a look at this uh, 1200 milliamp hour power bank. Again, this is from uh, Poundland here in the UK, a discount uh, store. And this one cost one pound, so that's pretty good value. But we're going to see if uh, the, it lives up to the claim of 1200 milliamp hour. And, uh, do some tests on it and also take one to bits. So what do you get in the box? Cheap little USB lead, a little lanyard, lose that instantly, and then the power bank itself. Now one of the interesting things about these power banks is that whenever you first get them uh, they are absolutely dead. There's no charge in them whatsoever. Absolutely nothing. And even whenever you put them initially onto charge, they don't seem to be taking much power. Let me illustrate this. Here's one that I have charged up. That will take around 100 milliamp to start with. And it'll stay like that for quite some time, and then it will fully charge up. That's just the, the nature of this particular beast. So, as uh, Dave at EEV blog says, let's not uh, turn it on, let's take it apart. Just a single eight, six, 18650 cell and a little circuit board. The circuit board looks similar to the uh, the next model up that I've already done a, a tear down on. There we go. So yes, it says on it 1200 milliamp hour. So that's where they're getting their claim from. There's the circuit board. I'll get a, a better close up shot of that in a minute. Got both sides of that circuit board. Let me just find out uh, the last one that I did the teardown on and we can compare. Now this is the, the other one. So it's fairly similar on first glance anyway. It's a little bit different on the top. I'll get the close-up uh, view sorted and we can have a, a bit of a better view of this. One moment please. So here's the close-up of the circuit board on the uh, 1200 milliamp hour battery bank. Unfortunately they've scrubbed off the numbers on that little integrated circuit so we're not able to show you that. I shall I'll bring in the other one there and you can see the similarities. Let's see if we can get them both. So a few differences uh, between them on that side and then of course we can turn this over. A bit more of a difference on the other side. So they are different which obviously makes sense one is a larger capacity battery than the other so I did quite a number of tests to see what the capacity are for these uh, particular battery banks and as you can see uh, most of the tests were done on the orange colored power bank and then I did one or two on the green power bank I noticed quite a difference there's a few uh, things to be learned from these figures. Uh, first of all, just looking at the figures that we got from the orange power bank, I carried out just under 20 tests at various currents. This was to establish uh, where it was most efficient at converting from the cell voltage to the output voltage. Uh, these circuits are designed for peak efficiency around a, a certain current range. And so by testing it at all the different current uh, loads, you can then see from the capacity figures 
uh, of the discharge capacity where it's most efficient. And it seems to be on these cells, it seems to be between 300 and 400 milliamp of a load. As you can see down here, whenever we got to 1,000 for the 1 amp uh, rated output, which is the maximum rated output on the, the, cell, the battery, uh, it plunged quite low. But notice the discrepancy between the two different uh, power banks, between the green and the orange. Here on the 500 milliamp uh, discharge test, you can see the orange was at 370 milliamp hours, whereas 552 on the green. It's even more stark whenever you go down to the, the 1 amp discharge. It's more than double the capacity. So there's quite a bit of variance in these, these power banks. So as they're only a pound each, it's quite worth getting a, a few of them and you will find that there'll be some variance within them. And I often wonder whether these power banks live up to their claim. They often have a sticker on the front, as this one does, saying that it's 1200 milliamp hour battery capacity. And it's true, if we look at the actual cell itself, it says on it, 1200 milliamp hour. I did some calculations. Now, 1200 milliamp hour with uh, 3.7 volts gives 4.44 watt hours. Now, with charging and discharging, there will never be a complete 100% transfer of capacity. A cell will always take more than its capacity to charge to being full and will never give 100% of that whenever you discharge it. The thing to remember is that when you charge these power banks, it charges through the circuitry. The circuitry is not completely 100% efficient. In fact, it would be doing very well and be very good circuitry if it was about 90% efficient. I suspect that this is probably more like 75% efficient. So in charging it, you're losing 25% of what you're putting in. And then whenever you discharge it, you equally will lose uh, a certain amount, uh, maybe up to 25% again. So there it could be your 50%, uh, which brings you into the ballpark of what we measured. So while it's a little misleading, what they say in the front, uh, technically it is true. You just have to remember that they're quoting the capacity of the actual cell and not what capacity you will get out of it. So I've also got some uh, footage that I took with my thermal camera just showing how much heat this little circuit board uh, generates uh, both uh, when charging but especially when discharging. I filmed it from cold uh, with a one amp load on it it's interesting to see just how quick it heats up. In fact, within six minutes, it's got to pretty much, I think, 90 or 100 degrees. Uh, so that's in free air as well. Imagine it being cooped up within this little uh, case with no free air flowing around it. So certainly these things get hot whenever they're run at their maximum. So what can we say? Is this Signal X power bank, 1200 milliamp hour, worth it? Well, for one pound, it's hard to argue with that. It's very cheap, but you do get what you pay for. Pound for pound, or pound for milliamp hour, you get more out of these two pound uh, Poundland power banks. But if you've got a project that only requires a very low current, these, along with the other the other ones, the, the two pound versions, which I've done a review of as well, have the advantage that they keep their five volt on the output at all times. They don't turn off. So if you've got a project that just needs five volts at a low current, these are ideal. It's got a, a lithium ion battery, it's got charge circuitry and USB connectivity. Very uh, useful. So we hope that this review and teardown of this power bank has been some help. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.